All righty, welcome back to another episode of Two Plane Sports. Today, it is the inaugural SEC new look best college or best conference for college football in the country, and honestly, college athletics, in my opinion. I mean, baseball is elite. Um, I guess the Big Twelve might have something to say about basketball, but it is by far overall the best conference in sports. So Oklahoma is now a part of it. The football schedule has been released. We know OU's uh, schedule as far as we always knew the opponents. We just didn't know how it was going to be set up. So we're going to be talking about where do we see some issues potentially, maybe some uh, record predictions, um, and some things to watch for. So, But before we do, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below. And remember, we go live every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Central to talk OU football, general college football, and uh, a lot of recruiting. So you definitely want to join in for that. All right, so Oklahoma, um, the schedule's been released. So I'll let Jose bring it up. Perfect. Okay. So initially, I've got two takeaways. I think it's, uh, you know, we knew seven home games uh, was going to be a thing for Oklahoma. The fact that they start four games at home, that's pretty incredible and doesn't happen very often. And my other takeaway was two bye weeks. Um, I like that a whole lot. What do you think? What are some of your takeaways? Yeah, so the the start of four straight home games is, is crazy to me. But the – and it, it definitely stood out like you mentioned it. The bye weeks, the fact that there's two is kind of the initial reaction. You know, nice to have two breaks in this long season, especially if Oklahoma can make the playoffs. Um, That'll be very helpful to make sure these guys are are rested after those final two games because those are not easy uh, two games to end the season on. But where those bye weeks are currently slotted, the week after Auburn, which is going to be a tough game, the first time we are traveling in the SEC. And at Jordan-Hare, you saw what Alabama had to do to pull off a win versus a bad Auburn team last year. They should be better. Hugh Freeze is recruiting at a high clip, getting those five stars that every team co- every team around the country is coveting. Assuming Oklahoma can... Regardless of regardless of the outcome of that game, because we'll talk about that in a little bit, you get a bye week before you head into the Red River shootout. That's nice because emotions are going to be high. It'll be nice to get a little bit of a of a break there, a breather for the guys to recover. Assuming they're you know they're banged up after five games, which isn't a crazy thing to get to assume. And then your next bye week is after Missouri. You know, you're revitalizing it, a an old rivalry, and I think it's going to be one that is going to be fun to, to watch, especially with how OU and Missouri keep having to, to battle for some recruitments and, you know, some, some potential tampering um, going on, being rumored. So the emotions will be high, I think, for both fan bases going into that game. Then you've got the bye week before the big game of the season in Norman hosting the Crimson Tide. Those, I think, that, that's that got to be the thing that, as an Oklahoma fan, you're probably either excited about or taking a sigh of relief. Because if you had tough games going into both Red River and Bama, it would be easy to see how some concentration issues could happen, um, you know, with, uh, with the game prior to those big games. It definitely could be, and <clears throat> I was double checking a, a couple of things, um, and I'll just start talking. So, a couple of things. The first the first nine games that OU plays next year, there are only two true road games, only two. I mean, Texas it's fifty fifty. It's a neutral site. I mean, as neutral as you're ever going to get, really. So. That's a big deal. Um, and then the back half of the schedule, I mean, of at Missouri, you have a bye week, then Alabama, and at LSU. 
that I know they said I know why they did this. I mean, it's you know they assume that Oklahoma is going to win most of their games or have a high likelihood to be undefeated potentially going in or at maybe just one loss going into Alabama. Looking at the Texas schedule, I was like, well, okay, so we've got a buy. Does Texas have a buy before our you know Red River? And they do. So there's no advantage really to be gained on either side. Both both schools are getting that bye week going into that game, which is nice. Um, and then I was looking at what does Alabama have before Oklahoma? And Alabama has Mercer. So it might as well be a bye week for Alabama at that point. Um, so they're not really behind the eight ball there at all. Um, and then when you look at LSU, they have um, they have Vandy the week before us. So the way that the SEC has structured this of the you know OU going Alabama at LSU, all schools don't really the only the only school that's at a disadvantage is Oklahoma in this in this schedule because. Alabama is playing Mercer before us, and we have a bye week, so that's pretty even. But we play Alabama while LSU plays Bandy. And so, and we have to go on the road. And that to me, right there, is not the first true test of the SEC, but that is kind of like the welcome to the SEC. You get to go um, play two of the premier football programs in the conference back to back. You know, the last two games of the season. Playoff hopes on the line, maybe an SEC championship on the line. Good luck. Yeah. So it's, and I think it's true for every team. If you really go go back and dissect every single SEC team's schedule, they have that two or three game stretch where I mean, ours just kind of sucks because it's at the end of the end of the year. But if you look at everyone, they're gonna have that two or three game stretch where it can make or break their season. Like you mentioned, they get to play those cupcake games. Luckily, we have our first ever middle of the season cupcake game in Maine, uh, beginning of November. So that'll be that'll be nice. A little little uh, change of pace there instead of having to go through you know cons- all those conference games and the season. You get get a little breather of a game, um, a quote unquote bye week to kind of reset the team a little bit one thing too that probably fans that just look at the names of schools are going to overlook Tulane Tulane I think we're getting a we're going to get a much weaker version of Tulane because their head if I remember correctly their head coach um was just replaced recently so they're they are still good, but they're not what they were two years ago when we played them with in Lincoln Riley's final season. They're still still going to be a tough game, but obviously not not as not as difficult as it may have been if it was two years ago with with the previous regime. You know, they did lose some some big players, so they're having to rebuild. They had a lot of young guys. Just maybe they'll have a little some more senior guys that'll help them contribute. But we're getting what I think is going to be a weaker two-lane team than we saw the last time. In Tennessee, it's the first SEC game to open up our future in this conference. Going to be fun, for sure. But we don't really know what Tennessee's going to be. I don't know if Joe Milton's their quarterback. I don't know if Nico Imaleva is going to be their guy. Because um, he was their five-star in the 23 cycle from those like five five-star quarterbacks they got one of them is he gonna take the reins over there for for Hypel it's a Hypel's homecoming uh don't believe he's coached in Norman since he let since he was let go as the offensive coordinator so a lot of storylines are going to the first game in the SEC against Tennessee it is and overall the way that the schedule is set up I don't really have any complaints at all um I'll tell you what a schedule that's brutal the toughest schedule I think next year is going to be Florida. They finished the season, the last five games, Georgia, 
Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and Florida State. I'm not jealous. So, overall, I mean, where, where do I see Oklahoma finishing here? They'll beat Temple, Houston, and Tulane. I think they'll beat Tennessee because of the uncertainty at Tennessee. I, You know, that Auburn game, again, it's – a lot of it has to deal with. I'm I'm a little nervous with a you know fresh, basically a freshman quarterback. I know he's a sophomore, uh, sophomore quarterback. I think Oklahoma's going to be in a tight one there. I wouldn't be shocked if Oklahoma stumbled there. Um, emotions might be high, but I'm when I look at this schedule, I think Oklahoma honestly will probably go ten and two. Um, I th- ten and two potentially nine and nine and three, but I think Oklahoma will beat someone that they you know a kind of a coin flip like between Texas, Alabama, and LSU. I think Oklahoma has a has a fair shot to win two of those games, and I think that Ole Miss is Miss game is scary. Um, Lane Kiffin's good. Jackson Dart's coming back. I think Oklahoma's going ten and two next year. So and in the playoffs. That's fair. I would agree. First four games, I think Oklahoma wins, especially because they're at home. I think that helps a ton. At Auburn, definitely understand where you're coming from. First road game experience for this team in the SEC. And even if it wasn't the first time in the SEC, even teams that have been in the conference for years struggle at Jordan Hare. So definitely expect that to be a team that is going or an environment that's going to give Oklahoma fits. But I do believe Oklahoma wins that because you also saw you see teams go in there and perform at what they're expected to be. And I think Oklahoma can do that with Brent Venables, especially to start the year. I think that that's right now where where you look at this OU team and you want to see them perform in the back half of the schedule post Red River. Um, even in even in year one under Brent Venables, the issues became more apparent post Red River. So looking at the schedule after Red River, you know, I think OU will beat Texas, but that is for sure a biased take because I will never say that Texas will beat Oklahoma. Um, South Carolina, that's probably one you win, even regardless of the environment, obviously it's a home. Shane Beamer is really struggling for whatever reason. They're going to have a brand new quarterback. They're losing their star wide receiver in uh, Leggett, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. He has recruited well. They have Nick Harbour, a five star that Oklahoma was recruiting last year. They just, um, they're adding a five star in this 2024 cycle. So they have some top end talent, but for whatever reason, they can't put it together. At Ole Miss is going to be a tough one. Um, Lane Kiffin gets his quarterback back. He'll have now three years in that system. Probably a team that, when you look at the experience they're bringing back, going to be a team that people will not expect to be very good because no one really ever expects to be Ole Miss to be an 11-1, and even a team that could go on to be 12-0. and but they're, I think they're going to be good, and that'll be a tough game. So that could be the first Oklahoma loss right there at Ole Miss uh, that I see on paper. Main, you know, pseudo bye week. At Missouri, again, the next one that Oklahoma could lose. Uh, they, they've they played well, as much as that hurts to say, because they are starting to get annoying as a fan base. But they're, they're a decent team. Their defense still is suspect. Um, they've had a, had, they've had some games won by their kicker. Um, the one that is easiest for me to recall is that Kansas state game where he had to kick a 60 something yarder at the end of the game to win. Um, so it's not an unbeatable team, but one that could be tough. I'm going to take, I'm going to put Oklahoma there to take the, the win. Unfortunately, I think the last two games are where Oklahoma could drop and their playoff hopes might might go away. Alabama coming to Norman definitely one where you you expect a home crowd to be there regardless of the time of that game. It's Alabama 
visiting Oklahoma, big game, probably going to have a lot of media attention because of the brands. If both teams are good, you expect at least one of the the uh, college football pregame shows to be there. I'm going to take Oklahoma to win that just because you don't really know what Alabama is going to be. They were up and down this year, needed some close calls, especially on the road. Road games are tough for all, even Alabama. So as long as the home crowd is there, I think Oklahoma can win that. At LSU, I would take that as another on paper. Could see that being a loss because, again, the environment, one that can be extremely tough to overcome. <clears throat> they do have a new quarterback next year, though, so that could help Oklahoma, but it is game 12 where whoever their quarterback is will more than likely be in a rhythm um, and ready to go. So did you just predict Oklahoma to go to 11-1? and one? No, I picked 10-2. and, 10 and two. I think LSU is it will be their our second loss. And who's the first, Ole Miss? Ole Miss, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 10-2. and two. I think that gets you in the playoffs when you're in the SEC and play a schedule like that. I mean, I'll take 11-1, and one, though. If the, yeah. if the LSU quarterback isn't very good, it's definitely going to be what will be uh, OU's saving grace. But I, I th- the one thing that could propel Oklahoma to that is the fact that this defense is one, probably one of the most experienced defenses in the country with Billy Bowman, Stutzman coming back. You don't really lose any high performers. Um, I think Woody Outside Washington Woody is Washington. A, yeah, he's the expected one. But you bring in uh, Des Malone, even if he's not your number two corner, you have the guys behind him and Kenai Walker and Josiah Wagner, you know, whoever gets slotted in. You have, as long as Gentry Williams can stay healthy, I think that's really where you look at Oklahoma and uh, just a high octane pass game is what could be their, yep. their Achilles heel. Okay. Well, I'd take 10 and 2 in the first, first year um, with a freshman quarterback. Or, well, I guess sophomore, but a quarterback that has not played. So, that's all I've got. Do you have anything else? Nope. End of video for this one. Let us let us know your predictions, where you think Oklahoma will drop. Because I'm sure, it, because it is the SEC, probably emotions will get a little bit higher. And I would guess that some people are going to put 7 and 5 in the comment section. But let us know. Maybe I'm wrong. For sure. But man, it's far. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below. And we'll catch you guys next time.